Hi everyone, welcome to Weight Loss for After Effects. My name is John Dickinson. I've been using After Effects since about 1996, and I've always kept up with what's in the latest releases. I've always felt that the more I knew about After Effects, the more efficient I could be when using it. So what we're going to cover in Weight Loss for After Effects are some of the tools and best practices that I use on a daily basis to help me trim off the seconds and minutes from my workflow to lose that unnecessary waiting and do more in After Effects. And I'm absolutely certain by the end of this three hour course that you too will be able to work faster in After Effects. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started by talking about a few things that you can set up that are gonna save you time on every project. And I'm talking here about preferences and shortcuts. Some of these things are only small, maybe save you a few seconds. Others, like autosave, can literally save you hours if you've lost a project. And the first thing you'll see in front of you here is the start screen. I don't use the start screen, it gets in my way. And I was recently presenting at NodeFest in Melbourne, and I asked the audience of around 180 After Effects users how many of you use the start screen or the start window, and about two people held their hands up. So it isn't very popular and best to get it out of the way from the start because you know what it's like. You've launched After Effects, you go to get started and then a few seconds later this guy pops up and then you have to close it. So let's jump into the preferences and we'll start there. I'm going to press Control Alt semicolon, that'll be Command Option semicolon on Mac. And up here under General, I'm going to uncheck Show Start Screen at Startup and that's going to get that out of the way and I can forget about it. Next, I'm gonna click on display. I just wanna to touch on this one here, disable thumbnails in project panel. This was probably more important in earlier versions of After Effects when computers weren't quite as powerful. You can choose to disable the thumbnails and that'll turn off the thumbnails in the project panel because you can take a little bit of a performance hit because these actually have to preview. And depending on what you've got selected in your project panel, it can take a little bit longer. Not so much of an issue these days. I've been using this since very early versions of After Effects. And you may want to leave it on because having the thumbnails visible allow you to preview, obviously, what you're going to be working with or what you're going to be putting into your composition. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to set that up in the project section. So I'm going to leave this unchecked for now. Next, under Import, I want to talk about this setting here, automatic footage reloading. This is something I basically missed up until very recently. And the default setting under auto reload is non-sequence footage. I actually changed this now to all footage types because if my sequences have changed, then I really want After Effects to auto reload those sequences as well. So all footage types is probably the better option here. Next, let's talk a little bit about the disk cache. Now, of course, the disk cache can save you time when you're previewing your composition. Maybe you've made only a few small changes to a comp that you've already ran previewed and you've got disk cache turned on. That way the new preview is not going to take as long because it's only going to preview what's changed. You may have also done a preview and closed After Effects overnight and you come back in the morning and ran preview. It loads up nice and fast from the disk cache. So you can save a fair bit of time having this turned on. Just remember that you need the disk cache to be on a fast hard drive, preferably a solid state drive that's separate from the footage. I don't yet have a solid state drive for my cache, something definitely on my to-do list. Now, while we're talking about the disk cache, let me just cancel that. I'm just gonna open up this project here. It's just a black solid and just come into the render queue. If I click on render settings, something to keep in mind with the disk cache is that the default setting is read only. So your render will read from a disk cache. But if you want it to write to the disk cache as it's rendering, you need to change this to current settings. Okay, something else to keep in mind, if I just click on comp one here, notice how we can see this green bar. This is the cache indicator. If you've got frames loaded into the disk cache, they'll appear as blue. This can give you a bit of a performance hit you can actually turn it off by right clicking on the tab here in the timeline panel and choosing to uncheck show cache indicators. That can just speed things up 
just a little bit. Okay, let's go back into preferences. Now let's talk about new project. This is a fairly recent addition for After Effects. I've got new project loads template turned on because I've created a template for motion works. And in this template, if I just click open, I just select it and click open and click OK. If I make a new project, you can see I've got my hierarchy all set up. I've got my comps and source folder. We're going to talk a little bit about organizing the project panel in the project section. But for now, just keep in mind that you want to have new project turned on in the preferences. Because obviously, if you're not using this, then every time you load a project, you've got to set up your folder structure. And it takes time. And also, you might make mistakes. You're not going to have consistency across all of your projects. So that's definitely a no-brainer. Underneath that, another no-brainer is autosave. Now you can see here, I've got autosave set to every five minutes. The default is 20 minutes. I like to autosave regularly because, I don't know, 20 minutes if you've lost your work is just too much to redo. And you can see I've got maximum project version set to 20. Now, obviously saving a big heavy project takes time and having autosave pop up every five minutes can get in the way, especially when you're on a roll. What I suggest is keeping your project panel nice and lean. I know it's not always possible, but if it's lean and there's not a lot of stuff in there that's unnecessary, then you're gonna have faster saves, not just auto save, just saves in general, and you'll be a lot better off. But it's up to you how much you wanna set these to and how long you're prepared to wait when the project saves. But I do suggest keeping auto saved on because I don't know about you, but it's saved me a bunch of times. Sometimes maybe I've saved inadvertently over a file, which I didn't mean to, and I've been able to go back to a version just five minutes old, which is wonderful, rather than having to spend another whole day redoing something. Okay, so let's just click OK on that. Now let's just talk about shortcuts. Now I'm going to launch the keyboard shortcut visualizer by pressing Control, Alt, inverted comma, and that's the button right next to the enter key. Now this is something I've only just recently started using. It's very new in After Effects. And here you can see I've got my own custom layout, jd.text. You can also choose the default setting if you wanna go back to After Effects default shortcuts. And the great thing about this is that it's not only possible to change shortcuts, you can also now add shortcuts to things that don't have them. And there's a few that I've chosen. The first one is Time reversing keyframes. Let's just type this in here. Time reverse keyframes. I've set that to Alt R. And if you don't know, you select the command and click over here and then type in the shortcut. So I've chosen Alt R for that. Time reversing keyframes is something you do a lot in the timeline and it's great to have a shortcut for it. Another one is Close Project. This doesn't have a shortcut, but I've given this one Shift W. and blending modes. Who hasn't wanted keyboard shortcuts for blending modes? I've added shortcuts for multiply, Alt M, and I've added one for screen, Alt S, and one for overlay. I could probably do one for soft light. How good to have shortcuts to make applying blend modes much faster in the timeline. Another one that I use a lot is go to time. This used to have an easy shortcut, but then it was changed. I've changed it back to Alt-G, much easier to remember. Interpret footage, I've set to Alt-F, and I've added one for solo. How good to have a keyboard shortcut to solo layers in the timeline. So I can select a layer in the timeline, press Shift-O, and that'll solo that layer. Press Shift-O again, and that will unsolo it. And you've probably got commands in After Effects that you use a lot that don't have shortcuts and you can add them here as well. So for now, I'm gonna click OK. So that's it for basic setup. Maybe there's a few things in here that you did know, but you didn't put in action, or there's a bunch of things that you didn't know. Either way, definitely spend some time getting your project set up, do it once, and you're gonna save time every time you launch After Effects.